We welcome you this morning to the Congregational Church of Booth Bay Harbor, and our worship service this morning begins with a prelude. God's grace and peace and welcome to you all. It's a gift this morning that we've come together for this time of worship. And we begin this morning with a celebration to all of our February birthdays. And to begin this morning, Mary Ann Reynolds brings us an update from our search committee. Good morning. Um, Ron Ross, my co-chairman, and I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on what we've been doing. Our committee of 10 has been meeting every Wednesday evening, and we've been working hard. The first step was to create what the United Church of Christ calls an opportunity form. Based on our church profile, we created a brief, what I'll, call, what I'll call a job description, along with a little bit about our church. And that will be posted as of this week on the UCC website. So any interested candidates will then send their profiles to the UCC, which will vet all candidates for us and then send on the profiles to us. In addition, we have created a checklist that we'll use to screen the profiles initially as to whether we want to pursue this candidate or decide not to. 
Um, we've been working with Peter, who's been presenting us with um, some questions that we may be asked by candidates, so we'll be prepared for that. And we're in the process of creating our own interview questions. So we'll have a set of questions, each of which will be presented to each candidate. So each person who is one of our prospects will have the same experience in having questions, the same questions asked by the same interviewers. After that, we will discuss each candidate and hopefully the end of the process will be a perfect match with a new settled pastor for us. Once we get into the profile review position, we will probably not be giving you much in the way of updates because all of that work will be confidential. In fact, Peter won't be joining us for those discussions either. If we need it, we also have a backup plan, phase B, to, um, as we say, cast a wider net for candidates. But as I said, we are in the first stages. We have the position posted and we expect to receive profiles pretty quickly and we will continue reviewing them, as I said, until we get the perfect candidate for us. So keep us in your prayers and um, we will do the best we can for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Ann, and thanks to all who are part of the important search committee um, process. Well, I don't know about you, um, but for me and for us here in Booth Bay Harbor, it's been quite a week. A week that began with a windstorm and bitter cold, so cold that the locals even said that it was cold. Power outages for some of us this week, and late in the week, news that the schools are closed in town due to a COVID exposure. There's no church school today, and there won't be church school next week. Some members of our church family are quarantining this morning, including Tom Dewey, our AV technician. So you'll see some things different in today's service, and great thanks to Jeff Long, who's filling in in Tom's role. And in the midst of all of that change and disruption and all that's done in us and in our community, the birds are singing. Have you heard them early in the morning? And the crocuses, they're popping up in our yards. You know, it was another time of change, lots of talk of devastation, destruction, lots of words of woe. And in the midst of it all, a chapter breaks forth. God's song breaks forth in chapter 35 of the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah sings out, the wilderness and the desert will sing joyously. The bad lands will celebrate and flower like the crocuses in spring bursting into blossom, a symphony of song and color. Blind eyes will be opened, deaf ears unstopped. Lame men and women will dance like deer and the voiceless break into song. It's all here. All of the woe and all of the trouble, all of the change and transition, and it's all here. The birds are singing, the crocuses coming forth, and in the midst of all of it, this new day breaking forth.
request for a story on mental health. I knew I had one to tell, but was still hesitant that it isn't something you really usually talk about. And yet yesterday they had a celebration or at least a memory of those who have died from the overdoses, 500 in the past year in Portland. And they very carefully took the black balloons home, not to spoil the come country anymore. On Friday, as I was listening to public radio, the founder of a mental health program for young adults in, I believe it was Rhode Island, he spoke. He is a physician. And we were saying that between the ages of 18 and 25, that's when mental health so very often raises its ugly head, but also goes unrecognized. It certainly is the age group that's had the most struggle with the pandemic causing stress and anxiety. He went on to say that it is the story of his own son, who had been captain of two high school sport teams and was a good student. And yet he, supposedly a leader in the field of mental health, had not seen or heard the early signs. His story parallels my experience with a grandson who at the age of six was asked by the older kids to play soccer with him because he was so quick. His second grade classmate said, Will did math so quick it hurt the other guy's head. Who but Will could get an F minus in math and still be asked to join the math team on the very same day. He captained the soccer and the law class lacrosse teams, but he couldn't accept the chance to help out the PE teacher in a class. Strength, stress and anxiety has really been a big problem for him through this pandemic. Yes, mental illness is something we often turn a blind eye to and or a deaf ear. While we no longer have the peculiar old uncle locked up in the attic. We shy away from being supportive to those who are suffering or to their supporters. And maybe the stigma of the issues is such that it's hard on both the patient and the family. The young son of ours who died after being very involved with anorexia and the father has so often said, if only I had talked with him more. We could all be aware of the support that we might give at times to sufferers, their family, caregivers, loved ones. No two people are exactly alike. Mental illness and physical illness are alike in that our bodies, including our brains, don't always function at their very best. There is a light at the end of the tunnel when our eye sees and our ear hears the calls. We so often put our blinders on. Shall we pray? Lord, as we bow our heads 
lead us to the faith that we are able to love each other without reservation. We need to be more accepting, Lord. Support us as we open our hearts and minds in love and support. May the blessings you sprinkle on each and every one keep our eyes open for your loving presence. The music of the spheres in tune with the goodness that is all around us. May we change the way we help each other. Amen. Some of you have been asking about this old window uh, behind me that we've had up here for the last several weeks in our Lenten series on healing. It's an old window from the opera house down the street, um, perhaps some hundred years old. It's old and cracked and not a heck of a lot of good. And yet we've used it here every Sunday as a symbol and a reminder that we see, not despite our brokenness or getting around our brokenness, but that we're invited to see through our brokenness. And so we come on this day in all that we are, broken, beautiful, all of it, and here again, an invitation that we might see a little clearer, that we might hear a little not just with our physical eyes and ears, perhaps that can happen or not, but to be able to really see and to hear through the eyes of our heart and through the eyes of faith. The scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9. It's a story that picks up after the story that we're going to be talking about next week. Jesus has been at the home of Jairus, and he's just left that home when he's met by these two blind men out on the street. Listen for the word of God. And as Jesus left the house, he was followed by two blind men crying out, mercy, son of David, mercy, have mercy on us. And when Jesus came to his home, the blind men went in with him. And Jesus said to them, do you really believe that I can do this? And they said, why, yes, master. And so Jesus touched their eyes and said, become what you believe. Become what you believe. And it happened. They saw. And then Jesus became very stern. Don't let a soul know that this happened. But they were hardly out the door before they started blabbing to everybody they met. And right after that, as the blind men were leaving, a man who had been struck speechless by an evil spirit was brought to Jesus. 
And as soon as Jesus threw out the evil, tormenting spirit, the man talked away just as if he'd been talking all his life. And the people were up on their feet applauding. There's never been anything like this in Israel. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. It was Monday morning last week, and everybody who had come to Bible study was full of excitement, good news, feeling good. It was just all around our little Zoom circle. Some people in the group had gotten their vaccine that week, and some people indeed were looking forward to getting their second vaccine. Someone noted that the crocuses popping up in her yard and someone talked about the birds singing and rejoicing in those few days of warmth that we'd had the week before. You know, it's a false spring, somebody reminded us, but it's a sign the spring is coming. And on that Monday morning a week ago, well, we saw it all around us and among us. As we turn to the scripture that we've just heard this morning, we quickly came to the conclusion that something more is happening here than just a healing of physical eyes and a hearing of physical ears. Something is happening here on a deeper level, a physical healing as well as what perhaps we might call a spiritual healing. And we talked about that. We talked about how all of us know what it is to just see, what it is to really hear, to see and to hear what is right here, to be present to what is right here. Sometimes to be reminded that amidst everything that is here, and despite anything that can come here, you know, it's all gonna be all right. We're all gonna be all right. Or in the words of faith, in the words of the church, in the words of Jesus, I am here with you to the end of the age, no matter what. I left us all with a homework assignment at the end of our time together. I said, you know, in this coming week, life's gonna do just what life does. It's gonna throw stuff at us. And in the midst of it all, we're not gonna be able to see. We're not gonna be able to hear. We all know that. But I just invite us all to go out with curiosity and to wonder what, amidst everything life brings, will help us be reminded about this kind of seeing, this kind of hearing of God with us. I just finished up the Zoom call and I noticed I had two messages on my phone One from my sister, um, who is my emergency contact, and another from the doctor's office, and both telling me, call the doctor's office right away. Hello, I said. Sir, sir, are you feeling okay? I was, I said. Sir, You have a critically low sodium level. You need to get to the emergency room as soon as possible. Hearing those two words, critical and emergency room, got my attention. However, I tried to negotiate. Well, you see, I have a meeting coming up right now, and I'm wondering if I could like wait an hour and go after my meeting. 
pause. Sir, we highly recommend that you get yourself to the emergency room as soon as possible. This could be affecting your heart. That got my attention. I pivoted our meeting until later in the afternoon and took off down River Road to the hospital. And all along the way, I'm thinking of our Bible study. I'm thinking about seeing and hearing. But all I can see is, how soon can I get to the emergency room? All I can hear is critical and your heart I try to remember, as I've invited members of our Bible study to do, to have one of those scriptures in your pocket that you can like pull out at a time like this and just like remember. At this point, I can't remember any scripture at all. Oh, I find my way to the emergency room. I'm checked out well by caring doctors and other uh, folks. And I am sent home to have another blood test on Wednesday. Tuesday morning. Tuesday, I woke up just so excited about my great day. I hadn't slept particularly well that night because of the howling windstorm, but I had some great things in my day ahead and I took off for my morning exercise as I always do. And on my way home, I noticed that our street is blocked off. Well, this has never happened before. I look up and I notice outside my house, this big tree has split in half and is resting on the telephone lines. I get home and instead of looking forward to my hot oatmeal and hot coffee, I find a house without any power. And I run around having eaten my cold cereal, skipping my cup of coffee, and trying to light a fire at a time when it's very hard to light a fire with the wind howling down the chimney. Wednesday morning, I wake up after a chilly night, and after my morning exercise again, I go and get my second blood test. I'm relieved when an hour later, I haven't received a call from the doctor's office. An hour and five minutes later, I get a call from my sister, a call from the doctor's office, call the doctor's office immediately. Hello, sir, are you feeling okay? I was feeling okay, I said, sir, you have a critically low glucose level. <laughs> At this point, I am worried. What is up with me? What's happening? A good talk to my doctor that afternoon and a schedule to have yet another blood test. Thursday morning, before I can even have my morning cup of coffee, my phone is alive with messages about the school closure because of a COVID exposure. Friday, I go to have my blood test. I do it in the afternoon, as my doctor suggested, and an hour and a half later, I'm elated to get a call from my doctor telling me that everything is fine. And yes, perhaps I should be having a little Gatorade and some more protein after my morning workout. Oh yes, and the power came back on. And I'm again enjoying my hot oatmeal and coffee and in fact, after a week like that, I surprised myself yesterday morning, singing in the house, making my French toast. And I'm still puzzled. I'm still puzzled here on this Sunday morning about this seeing 
and about this hearing, I wonder, is our seeing, is our hearing just all dependent upon things going well, working out all right? It certainly helps. I'm reminded and I'm humbled that no matter all of our good practices that we might do, breathing, praying, meditating, exercising, trying to eat well, despite all of it, sometimes we just get overwhelmed by anxiety. What about you? What amidst all that life throws at you helps you to see, helps you to hear? My sister reminded me at the end of the week, you know, as we get older, it's just gonna be more calls from the doctor like that. Perhaps you know that. I'm told that this perhaps is not the last windstorm that will ever hit the coast of Maine, and perhaps it will happen again. I'm told numerous times that, must be a record, Peter, you've been here for a year and two months and you haven't lost power before this week. And it's true. The COVID numbers are getting better. And a school closure reminds us that we're not quite yet at that place where we all wanna be. And it is true, the calendar says it, that spring's coming. But yes, perhaps it is still a bit early to be out on my bicycle. And 16 degrees is a bit cold. What I know at the end of a week like this is that sometimes I see and sometimes I hear. Sometimes I really do know everything that we talk about, that we remind ourselves each week at church. Sometimes I do. And sometimes I just don't. Sometimes I can watch my anxiety going up and down, knowing that it does me absolutely no good to getting where I need to go. And sometimes I'm just lost in my anxiety. Sometimes I'm just right here. I'm just present right here. And sometimes all I am is back somewhere last year, my body reminding me that, anticipating that, oh, it's March, and something bad, something unexpected, something unforeseen, something I and you and all of us have never been through before is right on the horizon and is gonna change our world in the next week. It's all here. It's all us. And, and sometimes in the midst of all of it, I hear Jesus whisper, Jesus reminder, become what you believe. We're not alone that despite everything, anything, life can throw at us. Power outages, calls from the doctor, wind storms, COVID, all of life, and even death, we're all held. It's all, it's all gonna be okay. And that healing, everything that we mean by healing comes 
not despite all the ups and downs, the anxieties and disruption that are life, but this healing comes as we find our way through it. You know, we come right now to this time of communion. And I think about this seeing and hearing that we're wondering about today. I think about all who've gathered around this table. I think of those ourselves sometimes that just look and say, this is it. While others look and say, Wow, there's food for me. I think how some of us look and we come to this meal and going, God, this, this is kind of a strange thing to be doing. How other times we just see, oh, this connects us to Christian communities throughout the world and throughout time. We come back to doing this. Sometimes I come to this table feeling like anything that we speak about, about presence, about God with us, is somewhere I can never find it. And sometimes I come to this table praying that despite all I feel, in this reminder, this bread, this juice, this taking in of all that is God, that God is right here, never left us, never can and never will let us go, us go, us go. Can't you see? Haven't you heard? And sometimes that forms our lives. And so I invite us in with whatever gift you have today, that cracker, that piece of bread, that cookie, to give thanks for it as you hold it in your hands as something holy, precious, good, a gift, all these things. And do with me as Jesus did and calls us all to do, to take, to bless, to say thank you, to break, to be reminded that our wholeness and our healing comes through our brokenness and our sharing of it and not despite it. and to share. For all that this is, for all that it might be, this bread of life, this body of Christ, this gift for you. And we remember the story about how after supper, Jesus took a cup of wine. As we take our juice, our water, our beverage, our coffee, 
And we just do what we don't do often enough. We just say thank you. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for this that has been poured out and we make of it, we see in it, gift, blessing. For this cup of blessing, for this blood of Christ, for this reminder of what is always true, have you not seen and have you not heard? God present here, in, among, and with us all, now, forever, this cup of blessing. And will you join me in prayer? God, may the sharing of these gifts open our eyes to see and our ears to hear. May it free our tongues to share that gift of love of all that is you in and through and among all that we meet and all your creation. Thank you, God, for the gift of life. Amen. And we come now to this time of prayer. And prayer is always an invitation to just put down all of our shoulds and ought to be's and make a space to bring and to name all that we are and all that we hope for and that we might become. And so on this day, after a week of storm, thanks would be for the gift of a day of beauty and blue sky and sunshine. Thanks be for the people who bless your life and who have blessed your life and help you to see and help you to hear and help you to be reminded of all that is here. Prayers with our search committee for their careful, prayerful discernment of how the Holy Spirit is moving and speaking, who is being called to serve as your next pastor, and a prayer for the candidates who are looking longing, hoping for a place to serve such as this. Prayers with all of us in the transitions and trials of life. And so God, hear our prayers of concern for our community, for this small community touched in so many ways and interconnected in so many ways, for all especially who are part of our school system here in town, for our children and these 10 days of disruption and dislocation, for quarantine for some, for good care with them, for our youth, for our children's and our youth's parents, for all of our teachers in a particular time of just stress and strain and struggle after what has been already a long, long year. For our school staff and administration, for their good care and wisdom in helping to find a way to safety and care for all. For all, God, who've been affected by mental health 
challenges and crises, and especially in these days of COVID. For all who know the entrapment of addiction, God for healing, for healing that is beyond any of us to fix, but is deep within all of us to discover, perhaps, your healing in body, in mind, in soul, in spirit. Restore our wider world to a deeper healing. Restore our community to a deeper healing. Restore each of us to that deeper healing, that place in which you call us to live. God, in all that we are, we give thanks that there are moments when we can see, we can hear. And so we thank you again for the gift of Jesus who is always calling out to us to become, become, become what you believe. Who is always there by our side, showing us the way to a wider love, a deeper justice. Who invites us to come together, not despite who we are, but in all of who we are to be a community who can pray together with others throughout the ages and here and now. Our Creator, our Mother, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Oh, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. in my heart.
want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank all who are making this worship possible today. For Jeff Long, for Marty Hellman, Marianne Reynolds, Carol Osterman, Jeannie O'Connell, thank you. I want to give a shout out to what all of you who are in quarantine these days are offering. That good care might be with you. That good healing might be with you. And that that very healing, that care that we all need to carry in these days, is helping and healing and hope for the wider community. So our prayers are with all of you. Thanks to Bill Harvey and Leslie Jackson for the beautiful flowers to bless us on this beautiful day. They celebrate Victory in Europe Day and the memory of Bill's father who served in World War II from D-Day to V-E Day, Captain Cecil Harvey. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Leslie, for the offering of this gift. The reminder of this memory and the thanks for those who have walked the way with us to a wider seeing and a wider hearing. And as we come today, broken, beautiful, all that we are, what are we going to offer to help ourselves and to help one another see and hear all that is God with us? You know, it was a year ago, Italy had just imposed a major lockdown in their country. Toilet paper shortages were spiking across the United States. And this Sunday would be our last Sunday to worship together in public for the coming year. I've been reminded that during a time like this, though whether our minds remember, our bodies remember. Our bodies remember what happened with the singing of the birds and the coming up of the crocuses last year. Your body may be remembering some of that anxiety, some of that fear or foreboding that something unprecedented and difficult and challenging happened last year at a time just like this. It is a good time. It is an especially good time to reach out and connect with one another. To check in with each other and ask how we are and to check in with yourself. To help one another see and hear all that is, yes, bursting forth in newness among us and the good care that we need as we are finding our way through. Let's be light and hope and love, especially with and among us all these days. I'm gonna 
poet Amanda Gorman reminds us, there is always light. And the dawn breaks forth as we free it. There is always light. If only we are brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. May God grant you the grace never to sell yourself short, but grace to risk something big for the sake of something good. Grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And may that very light of God's love in you and with you and all around you be present, be light to your path from this time forth and forever and evermore. Amen.